You're tuned in to The Elevator Radio Show, a weekly program dedicated to covering news and information on elevators, escalators, and moving walkways. Produced in the wee hours of the morning, a new show is uploaded every Wednesday, sometimes even before you get out of bed. Listen to some of the comments sent in from our audience. Rob from New York writes, Tom, are you f***ing insane? You actually get up at 2 a.m. each Wednesday to put this show out? Man, you must love elevators. Tim from Illinois writes, I'm not sure why I listen, but ever since I tuned into the first show back in 2007, I've been addicted. Matt in Texas writes, I like your safety messages, Tom. It's important to remember them each and every day. And he also adds, When am I going to win the monthly prize pack giveaway? Ron from California sent this in. Despite your inability to pronounce words in the English language, I tune in each week and am glad that you offer this service to the industry. It's better than Google News Alerts. Sarah from Washington writes, Love the show, Tom, and look forward to it each week. I'm glad I signed up for the newsletter. You provide a valuable resource for the industry, not only for North America, but worldwide. Enjoy the show. And now, here's your sleep-deprived host, Tom Seibert. Hello, everybody. Today is June 3rd, 2020. It is good to have everybody here listening to the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are tuning in today, this is not a regular elevator escalator show. I felt today that there's just so much going on. I truly could not talk about elevators and escalators, mainly because it has been a tough four to five days uh, here in the Chicagoland area. First and foremost, I want to make sure all of you are safe out there. You're being careful. And you are, uh, you know, you're you're trying to get yourself away from uh, anything that might be a concerning situation, I should say, uh, regarding looters and whatnot. Where we produce the show, where my job is, where I work every day, we are an island in the city of Chicago, so we're surrounded on all, well, all sides, and so many of us or a lot of people realize they are not necessarily touched or affected by a lot of things that happen either, you know, downtown, cities, metropolitan areas, and like and such like that. And, and the reality is is that that is not the case in, in this situation with the protests and the, the looting and the, and the burning of buildings and the destruction. That has spread out into various areas across, across the country much further than uh, before. I also want to dis- put a disclaimer out there and, and preface this this show by saying I know that whatever I say on today's show may come across incorrectly or I may have missed a word or what I say may be misconstrued or misunderstood or mistaken by so many that listen to the program out there that this is not my intent at all uh, to to do that. Okay, I don't mean to do that, but I'm going to make points that are not going to be necessarily popular because I just have to say it. I just have to get as much as I can off my uh, off my chest, no matter what the consequences are. And if that puts me in in, in harm's way or if that puts my company in harm's way, it's uh, just something that's the reality. And I and I don't intend for that to happen. I don't want that to happen, but. It is what it is. So the show's not scripted whatsoever, and, and hopefully that we, we can we can get something good out of this uh, in the end. I, I uh, uh, you know what happened to George Floyd is is awful. Um, I don't think anybody in America says thinks that that is uh, or in the world thinks that that was a justifiable um, outcome to whatever had happened. You know, investigations will conclude one way or another. Or they will look into that. Justice will be served on those levels. Okay. I do believe in justice for the most part. Um, I believe that every everyone's lives matter, no matter what race you are. Um, and I, you know, and I believe in the the right to protest. I completely believe in the right to protest. What I don't believe in is the destruction and the looters that have taken city by city, without regard to safety, and. It is awful. I mean, it is literally awful to worry about your your personal property, to worry about everything, to see the 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 conflict and the uh, the fighting between looters, possibly protesters, and police in a city that is so far removed from the city that this terrible incident happened in. 
and it's 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 concerning. It's, it's it's deeply concerning. I don't see an answer in sight. I don't see an end. I don't know what is going to fix this. And it's just truly a, a scary time, I think, for our country. And I I don't know again what is going to fix it. I can tell you this. If I am in my building or my home and it is broken into, I will do everything in my power to protect myself and my family and my coworkers against any injury or harm to them. And that is how I feel. I will pick up whatever I can. It'll be a pen. It'll be something. It'll be a pipe. It'll be a bat. It'll be whatever it is. It will be something. I will go down fighting no matter what. I will do that in a heartbeat. What got me concerned about this, so many of us live in, in parts of the country where, you know, you see things on the news. And you're like, oh, yeah, you know, that's going on downtown or, you know, it's far away from where I live. The reality is, is that in this, this whole thing, this, you know, escalation has reached much further out than most people even realize. When you have a CVS or Walgreens just, you know, a couple blocks away getting looted and a T-Mobile store and a, you've got a, a mall when that's happening and it's like right in your backyard, you start to think like, man, this is, this is really happening. You know, this is going to affect me. I got to start thinking about how I can protect my employees. I got to start thinking about how I can make sure the buildings are, are more secure and, on, on, you know, have that, have that, uh, put the cameras up and stuff like that. That's something that we had, I had already done once the COVID-19 crisis had, had occurred is that within four days I had the building more secure I had cameras in place. I had, I had set up a text system to contact and a call system, automated robocall kind of thing for our company so that I could get information to our employees as quickly as I possibly could if there was some type of issue that we had to had to, uh, to deal with. And I used that for the, for the second time on Sunday night. Um, but it's, it's like you, in my mind, I started thinking long term and I'm like, man, when, like, at what point does it all just somewhat fix itself? And I just don't see that happening. And, I, and it, it's deeply concerning. And I, and I, I wish I had a better answer for that. So, um, and only time will tell. I want to say that I, I support our first responders. I, I support our police. I support our fire, our fire department. I support our uh, emergency ambulance workers. I, re, I support them 100%, 100% of the day, you know. Uh, and I, and I'm, I'll do that till I die. I've got family. I've got friends who are in, who serve communities across the country who have one of the, probably the, the most, some, one of the difficult, most difficult jobs in our country who are, I think for the most part, handling themselves pretty well in the protest photos and videos that I've seen, you're always going to have you know, other types of videos that show a different story. But as I say, you, you truly have to take a step back and try to figure out what may cause, may have caused that altercation. You know, was it somebody, you know, was it somebody giving somebody the finger? Was it, you know, just, just who knows? There, there's always more to a story than what the end, end result is. And um, so give you a little bit of history just in the last three, four days here at work. Uh, and at home, I've been going to my parents' house to help, uh, you know, cook, well, just cook dinner every, every night for them just to get some uh, nourishment in, in them. My mom's feeling better, but still not hundred uh, percent. this has been a long process. So Sunday night, my mom, my wife and I, uh, were over there. We had dinner, started leaving, you know, left probably about seven o'clock, maybe six 30. I don't even know around that time. Got on the expressway, realized that all the exits were closed going north <laughs> on the on the Eden uh, Expressway. At that point, it was like, what the hell's going on? You know, I mean, you just, it's almost like the news can't keep up with everything that's going on to the point where you're like, well, geez, there's, you know, they got all the exits blocked, you know, in terms of going to malls and stuff like that. So you start thinking, you're like, wow, I'm like, this is not good. So at that point, I get back, you know, I, 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 I get online i start trying to find out if there's any incidents that are closer to work and you know in case there's a situation 
where I need to let people know not to come in, you know, on, on that following Monday. Um, found out that there were, you know, a couple of looting incidents closer to work than, than I felt comfortable with. I wasn't quite sure how much worse it might get that night or the following day. Sent a text message out to entire team letting them know that hey listen tomorrow's closed i'm you know i went into the office made sure everything was okay uh worked a whole day and let everybody just stay home just kind of collect their thoughts and uh, be safe with their family the scary part was that left spent the whole day basically at work working i was working only one here um, and listening to the scanner, police scanner, just trying to get it, get a hold, get a handle on, on really what was going on in the area, just, just to make a better decision on what Tuesday would look like, whether people are going to come back to work or not, whether we're going to, you know, what we're going to do, what steps we're going to take to ensure safety of our, of our team. And uh, what, what was going on on Monday was, was truly frightening and gave me a new perspective on just what police have to deal with in the field it's hard. It is extremely hard. The amount of respect I have for police officers is immense. And if, if you know what, if somebody's going to throw a, a brick through my window or burn my building down, go for it. I stand by that 100%. And if you are a coward enough to do that, go, f you know, do what you got to do. I don't care. I don't care. Um, because the protest, the protest, I completely, it's, I don't, I, the right to protest is everybody's right. The right to to pillage, to loot, to burn is not okay. There's no place for that here whatsoever. Um, so anyway, so between like Monday, which was a pretty rough day as it, as it relates to the scanner, police activity, stuff like that, gave me a pretty good perspective on, uh, you know, possible incidents that uh, may move further north, you know, received a whole bunch of emails and you know people saying hey they're going to burn down the north side of chicago and then the suburbs and i'm like man you know it's a it, it, and it's for the most part what are you what are you gonna believe you know i mean you got stupid facebook posters with these stupid crap that you know but at the same time it it spreads hatred it spreads racism racism and who knows who's posting it but the reality is is you look at people differently when you're in a mariano's or a, a grocery store or a or wherever you're at, you do look. You you start looking at people who might be suspicious with a mask on, and and at the end of the day, it's very unsettling to be in some stores or to be out and about, um, or what you see on the street with vans and whatever. So it's truly a sad time when what is a, the destruction that's occurring is literally overshadowing what the protesters are protesting for. And it is, it's, it's just really frightening. And I wish, I wish we just could protest, or the protesters could protest like they're doing. And then we could just not have the rest of the what's going on because I do not see that happen. I, I don't see it shutting down anytime soon. I don't know what's going to do it. I just don't know. And I'm not going to talk politics. I think on, on many levels, um, I don't want to talk politics. I believe that, you know, I don't think, I, I believe that our government officials are truly out of touch. And I'm not talking, I'm talking federal, I'm talking, I'm talking statewide, um, citywide. I just feel, I, to me, this is my personal opinion. I'm not, you know, you can hate me all you want, but I truly feel that our, our, our political, our politicians are truly out of touch with, with what's going on and the severity of it. I also believe, this is again my own opinion, that being cooped up, being on, you know, home rule or being at home without a job for nine weeks in Illinois is like dry tinder. It is like the perfect storm for this kind of thing to happen, which again is unfortunate. Somebody yesterday came in at work and said, hey, I, I can't believe that you, you know, as soon as the lockdown went down or not lockdown, whether with home rule, stay at home order went into effect man, mandate. He's like, I can't believe you, you like put cameras up and you increase the security on the doors and, you know, put keypads on, on, you made sure that nobody could get in the building. It's like, like, 
just he was just sh- shocked and i and i told him i'm like you know what listen i was i was worried about being shut down for two weeks um i i didn't realize it was gonna be nine <laughs> you know so and i just said i'm like i knew it was gonna happen i i, I mean it, i didn't want it to happen but i knew the longer that we shut down the greater the chance of somebody who has no money who is not collecting unemployment who are who can't pay their rent is going to do whatever they need to do to do those three things to eat to and i personally believe that's true i'm not saying that's the reason why people are looting and why people are are burning buildings down but there is a lawlessness out there in a group of individuals. I don't know if they're, I, I'm not going to say who they are or what group they're with. I don't care. I honestly don't care. Share your own conspiracy theory with, with whatever the hell you think it is. I'm not going down that road. I'm not going down that rabbit hole because it doesn't matter. If you burn a building down or you loot a building, you're a criminal. You should go to jail. If you come to my building, you do that, I'm going to bludgeon you with, with a pipe. I'm going to bludgeon you with whatever I can find. You are not going to take what I have without a fight. I may not end up well in the end of that whole thing, but I don't care. I will fight for my, my right to protect my personal equipment and my, my gear and I, for my, in my team. The bottom line. Our country is a great country, and we are definitely in a, you know, in a, in a, in a world that I never could imagine would be what it is. And I just, again, don't know what's going to fix it. And every time I think that there is, it couldn't get any worse, I'm like, it's going to get worse, right? I mean, well, how, well, what can you, what's next that, you, that we see coming that's just going to devastate what we already don't have and what, what is already not working? It's just, it's, it's crazy. So anyway, again, as I end the show, it's a really quick blurb, and this is just my just me getting off my chest. I don't want to argue with anybody. I don't want to fight with anybody. I just want it out there because I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted because it is it's difficult to really wrap your head around trying to keep people safe when you don't know when it's going to end or how much worse it's going to get. That's what I'm having a hard time with. And and I know I realize that I can control what I worry about, but there's it's like uncharted territory, you know, and, and I feel bad for businesses that have, you know, ready to gear getting geared up to open last Friday only to find, you know, looters wrecking their businesses. I mean I feel bad for I feel bad for so many people. Include, including George Floyd's family and who don't want looting and who don't want the destruction. But here we are. Here we are with exactly that. And for those of you who are in the out, you know, away from that kind of violence, I am glad you are. And just keep, you know, be aware, be be safe and just make sure you're, uh, you know, you're, you're being a little extra cautious because there are people looking to take advantage of situations. And uh, my fear is when they st- stop looting the stores, when they stop looting, when there's no more cell phone stores to loot or grocery stores, they'll start turning to whatever else they can, they can go to. So, um, and it's a sad day when, when you have people shooting out you know, windows or throwing bricks through windows that either have a black lives matter sign up or have a police american flag support support flag up in their in their homes or a blue light that is a, that is truly just disheartening and and just breaks my heart because the police are there to help us first responders are there to help us firefighters are there to help us they truly are not the enemy there are ways of, of fighting, fighting for justice, fighting for a better, a better system. I don't know what those are. I don't know how to make those happen, but it starts with your government. It starts with, with trying to make a difference there. And if you say you can't make a difference, shame on you. Everybody can make a difference. Everybody. 
So start there. And if you have a, a good idea on how to make, you know, justice work, a better tomorrow, make it happen. Let it start with you. If you are that passionate about making that happen. Anyway, so that's all I have to share today. I hope you got something out of the program. Again, be safe. And uh, maybe next week we'll have some stuff to talk about regarding elevators. But that is my, uh, that's my therapy session. I should send, send everybody a... Uh, Send everybody a, uh, a check, right, <laughs> for, my, for my 20 minutes of talk. So, uh, so hang in there. Be safe again. Make sure you're practicing everything you can to, uh, to be safe. Uh, protect your family. Protect your companies, your vehicles, all that good stuff. And uh, just know that, uh, you know, as it moves, on, as it moves forward, that uh, each day that goes, goes, you know, we get into this, it gets a little bit easier. It gets a little bit more... Uh, tolerable, and uh, the police are are uh, stepping up to to do the job that they've been tasked to do. And for the most part, I see them doing that um, um, across the country. And and for that, thank you, first responders. I uh, like I said before, I have friends, I've got family, and uh, you are great. Your 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 service, your work is is greatly appreciated, and you are not alone in in your support. Okay, so all right, everybody, have a great rest of the week. Be safe, and we will be back next week. Take care. Bye-bye.